Hello everybody, welcome back to East Coast Taekwondo. I'm Casey Mazareski. Today we're going to go over the proper way to punch. Now, there's a lot of ways to punch out there. Um, this video may, some people may love it, some people may hate it, but uh, I'm going to discuss the way we punch here at East Coast Taekwondo and why we teach punching that way. So, first thing I want to talk about is um, proper punching in real life this video is going to be geared toward punching in real life in a self-defense situation. So it's not a sparring situation, it's not a boxing type situation, um, it's real life, you're trying to hit someone to cause the maximum amount of damage to them to stop them from hurting you. So to start, first thing you need to do is make a proper fist. So a proper fist is your hand, all your fingers curl into the palm of your hand and the thumb goes underneath. The thumb now should be wrapping underneath the two big knuckles. And these are the knuckles we're going to be hitting with. You want to hit with the actual knuckles, the bones protruding out here at the top of the hand, not the flat part of the fingers. So you want to maximize the pounds per square inch, so to say. You want to concentrate all of your impact into the smallest and hardest point on your hands, which is these two knuckles. So you make your your tight fist. Moving on from there, when you punch in a real life situation, the best punch you can throw is going to be a straight punch. There's a couple reasons for this. First of all, the most amount of power you're going to generate is by putting your whole body into this strike going straight in. Also, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So if it's the shortest distance, that's also going to mean it's the fastest which is also good in real life because we want to be quick in and out. A hook punch, a big roundhouse hooking punch like this might have a lot of power too, but the distance I'm traveling, no matter what, if I'm going like this and going like this, let's just say for argument's sake, this is coming at 60 miles an hour and this is coming at 60 miles an hour. This distance is longer, that means it's also going to be taking more time. Where this is shorter, so it's going to be faster. The other thing is when you punch like this, at the moment of impact, you don't have a lot of support behind the, behind the strike. So if you punch like this, you're hitting something like this. The impact is going through here. It's a very small amount of support from here to here, or anywhere on the hand. It's pretty much just going through the hand. When you punch straight in, you want what we like to say a battering ram of bone. If you think of how a battering ram works, it's a lot of mass in a straight line going in one direction and all that mass moves. That's mass, that's momentum, that's what smashes down castle doors, that's what smashes down doors today when police do a raid, is that weight going in a straight line. So it's the same way, you want that battering ram effect. So when you punch straight in, as you hit, all of this should be in line. I'm going to come over here. All of this should be in line. So as you hit, I'm going to start having a straight line from this knuckle through my forearm to my elbow. And actually at the moment of impact, now I have a straight line all the way to my shoulder. That is a very solid, very supported impact that's going to be able to do a lot of damage and cause the least amount of damage to you. So part of that too going on is the right way to throw a punch in that straight line. So you want to start here, your hands up, you're in your fighting stance or a guardian stance, we also like to call it, Hey, your hands are up. We're going to punch with the backhand, not the front hand. The front hand, that would be a jab. And while most of the mechanics are the same, right now we're just focusing on your straight punch. So I'm here, as I push forward, I twist my shoulders. Look at my shoulders right here. They're facing this way. When I punch all the way through, now my shoulders are facing that way. You want 180 degrees of rotation in your shoulders to get the maximum amount of power in that punch. Also, as you're doing this, your hips are turning and you're going to come up on the ball of your foot, which we'll show right now. So here's going to be a full body shot of a proper punch. So as I'm here, I come all the way around. You can see the ball of my foot comes up onto the, or my foot comes up just onto the ball of the foot as I punch because I'm also pushing forward with the ball of my foot. I'm pushing my body weight into the strike. So now my entire body weight of 180, 185 pounds is moving forward. 
maximizing the force of that punch. I'm going to concentrate 180 pounds into these two knuckles. Boom, I strike out and I come back right away. So a lot of times in martial arts you'll see punches where we hold it up. That's working on proper technique and that might be a situation in a form or a, a class routine going up and down the floor. But in real life, please know that you're not going to hold your arm out there for your opponent to grab and pull and twist and put you in some kind of lock or, or injure you some way. You're going to punch out and back right away. So where do you keep your other hand when you're punching? So there's two schools of thought. One school of thought is you pull this hand as you're punching. The idea being for every action there's an opposite and equal reaction. So if I'm throwing a punch with my right hand, I'm coming forward with my right shoulder, I'm generating X amount of power. But if I do that and at the same time I'm pulling with this arm, I'm doubling my power because now I'm going forward, but this arm pulling back is helping to accelerate this shoulder. And that's true and that's valid. Another school of thought is that this hand should stay up as you punch. So as you're here, this arm stays up to protect the head. And that's, that's true as well. It really depends on you and your situation and what you feel is best. If you're actually taking blows from your opponent as you go to punch, then you might want to keep this hand up. But just remember, you're not going to generate as much power as you would if you pull. If it's a situation where you've blocked and you know you've got a split second window where your opponent is not going to counterattack you, where he's off balance, whatever the case may be, then you might want to throw your other arm back to get this arm out faster and harder. So now I also just want to talk again, like I said, hands have to be tight. One of the biggest things uh, with punching in real life, a lot of people will say, uh, never punch someone to the head in real life because you're going to break your hand. And that's a yes and a no. If you train the right way in real life, the first place you want to punch someone is probably going to be the face or the head because you're going to cause the most amount of damage. Now, yes, if you punch your hand into a human head, which is a very hard target, the skull is uh, almost about the same strength equivalent to a coconut, you definitely can hurt your hand if you're punching the wrong way. And like I said, the wrong way. A lot of times that comes from people who punch either with these little knuckles when they punch, or they hit with the flats of the fingers when they punch, or their hand is open. And even people say, well, I train and I still want to punch someone in the head. Well, what do you train? Are you training as a boxer? Boxing is a great sport, it's a great art, and it has a lot of value to self-defense. But if you ever watch a real boxer, um, when they're shadow boxing with no gloves on, their hands are in the totally wrong configuration. They're like this all the time. That's because they train all the time with their hands in gloves, so they can't make tight fists. Their thumbs stick out and their hands are open like this. And then inside that glove, they have about three inches of tape wrapped all you know over their hands. They can afford in a boxing match to just throw their hands out any which way and let it hit their opponent anywhere it may fall to, uh, to hit them. But now you take that and put them on the street and their habit is to always be like this. So they start throwing with their hands open and if you hit a head with your hand like this, you will break your hand. In fact, the most common break when throwing a punch is these little bones right here and it's called a boxer's fracture. On the other hand, if you train with your hands tight all the time, like we do in uh, East Coast Taekwondo here, and you're aiming for these big knuckles all the time, if you hit someone like this with the two big knuckles anywhere in the face, you're going to cause a lot of damage to that face and very little damage to your hand. So that's this training tip on East Coast Taekwondo, proper punching techniques and why. You can agree or disagree. Either way, leave a comment below. Let us know what you think. Subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook as well. Like us there. And if you're ever in the Fairfield, Connecticut area, please come down and check us out at East Coast Taekwondo. Thank you.